uh, uh, Senate File 2413 does basically three actions, and I will tell you that two of those actions concern what I believe to be the two greatest threats to the livestock industry in Iowa that we face today. The bill also protects our food production facilities from trespassers. The bill increases the penalty for trespassing to an aggravated misdemeanor for the first offense and a Class D felony for subsequent offenses. I believe two components of this uh, address the gravest threats to animal agriculture in Iowa today. I'm going to focus on the last one. It's no secret that I was targeted by an activist group earlier in the year. Um, but about three hours ago, at 1.43 this afternoon, four hours ago, Senator Sweeney sent me an email, forwarded an email, and I want to read that to you. And as, you, as I read this, I want those of you that might be inclined to vote against this bill to consider what we're dealing with here. Here's the text, part of the text of that email. Last year, we heard news about activist groups in Australia and the UK launching interactive maps of farms and other facilities. Activists were encouraged to use the maps to find farms and plants in their areas and access them using any means necessary to collect photos and videos that activist groups might, might be able to use. We knew at that point that it would be not, uh, not be long before we saw this tactic replicated here in the U.S. And that prediction came true over the weekend when the extreme animal rights group Direct Action Everywhere announced what they are calling Project Counterglow. Project Counterglow involves a map with more than 27,500 farms and facilities mapped down to the exact street address. Activists can add photos and videos of what they call criminal animal cruelty. And I remind you that in their opinion, any farm qualifies for that description. They can use the, uh, what they call animal cruelty to the map. They can add videos to that that they have collected by trespassing and conducting surveillance of locations. The website also includes tips from other activists on how to do this. It is appalling for so many reasons that a group would publish a directory of locations for activists to stalk and harass. Most farmers live on their farms. So DXC is instructing activists to go to families' homes in order to carry out these campaigns. It made me sick to my stomach to pull up farms in my area where I know the farm family personally and I see their home addresses published for people with extremely negative intentions to access so easily. Just a couple hours ago, uh, I accessed the interactive map. I could easily find my farm, my name, number of animals in the building, and that sort of thing. This is chilling, folks. And what you may or may not know, but what I've learned from experience, personal, firsthand experience, is that there is, the, the MO here is simply lies, deception, and intimidation. That's what they do. In my case, intimidation to the point of a number of death threats. That's who we're dealing with. This bill does impose a penalty, a class D felony, charge for a second offense. So if you, as you consider on how to vote for this bill, I would encourage you to think about animal agriculture more broadly, think about the state of Iowa, the economy of the state of Iowa, your neighbors, your friends in rural Iowa, how this uh, the failure to address that sort of illegal and egregious activity is. So I ask for a yes vote on this bill, and I ask for a record roll call. And the chair recognizes the senator from Lynn, Senator Mathis. 
Thank you, Mr. President. First of all, I want to address Senator Rosenblum. What has happened to you is terrible. It's just terrible. You and I have talked about this. We even had a stake over it. <laughs> and we talked through uh, just how afraid you were and just how you know, uh, concerned you were about your family, about your property, you know, and how wrong that was. And it was wrong. It's wrong what they're doing to you. It is wrong what they're doing to you. But let me put this in another perspective. We have current laws on the books that deal with trespass. We have current laws on the books that deal with harassment and damage to your property and damage to your reputation. We have current laws that will protect you. We talked, you and I talked about law enforcement and the importance of law enforcement in this whole thing. And, and what could law enforcement do for you? I think law enforcement can do a lot for you. They can help you through this. It's unfortunate that you would have to hire an attorney when this is something that was occurring to you and you have to, you know, incur that ex expense of defending, defending when you're really, shouldn't be the defender, right? You should be the, the person prosecuting, obviously, but you, should, you shouldn't have to put your money out to do something like that. But there are current laws on the books that will protect you. There are even elevated trespass laws, but those lead to laws for utilities and for uh, nuclear power plants, like the one that's in Dan Zumbaugh's, Senator Zumbaugh's district, and used to be in my district. Those are huge public safety issues that involve hundreds of thousands of people at times. If we were to look at other businesses that would like to have elevated trespass laws or a special trespass law just for them, what about server farms? What about hospitals? They're integral parts of our society that should not be injured and we shouldn't hold up business for them due to a tres trespassing and perhaps those should have elevated laws as well. Again, the current laws protect a lot of people from a lot of harm. I'm also gonna look at this from a First Amendment perspective, primarily from reporting. And Senator Brown, we talked about this in the committee, remember? We were talking about reporters' rights. So in journalism school, you learn about your reporter's rights in terms of where you can take pictures and where you can go to get your information. We study trespass laws. You can stand on a city street and take a picture of a burning building. But when you get out to a farm and you need to get close to a barn fire or a grain bin suffocation or something that's tragic like a tornado you might need to get closer to the object. I've covered many barn fires. I've covered a lot of stuff on farms. And when I go there, the public safety officials will say, will allow you to come on the property. But you're always mindful of the private property. And you have to weigh what might be a charge that you would receive of trespass against the public's right to know. And the public's right to know in those conditions, I think, are beneficial in terms of imminent danger, right? Under this law, a reporter who might be covering a news story and damage property while they're on the property, so I think I said maybe running up somebody's lawn or running into something with a news car and damaging a potted plant or whatever, whatever it might be. I think that's it's probably not a good example. But they would fall under something like this or they could fall under something like this. 
if they were not to get the permission from the homeowner to be there and take those pictures. So that's kind of a, that's a gray area right there. Um, we also, um, we also have to take a look at some of these higher penalties that, that, um, that you have put on this, a Class D felony for the second offense. It's pretty stringent. Um, even a, a trespass on a, a utility, I don't think is that high, is a, a Class D felony. But in conclusion, this is, this is what I can say to you, is I'm sorry for what's happened to you. I really am. I can understand what you're saying. I can appreciate your saying. But I do not agree with what you're trying to do. I think that it affects First Amendment freedoms from the rights of reporters. Thank you. The chair recognizes the senator from Polk, Senator Bolton. Thank you, Mr. President. I would ask if Senator Rosenboom would yield. Senator Rosenboom, will you yield for a question? Senator Bolton, you're in order. Senator Rosenboom, as, as you and I have discussed in previous versions of this type of legislation, there have been some court challenges to this type of, of statute. Uh, have you had any discussions to, to guard against challenges to what is uh, drafted in this legislation? We have assurance from the Attorney General's office that they see no red flags or no problems with it with respect to constitutionality, Senator. Okay. And as we look at the, the reason for elevating the penalties, um, it, is it fair to say that that is in proportion to the elevated harm that can come from uh, ag trespass sure, and packing sure. houses and operations? Sure. Okay. Thank you, Senator. I had the opportunity to visit one of our state's packing houses last week. I don't know how many of you have, have done that. Have a, a show of hands. Who's, who's been in a packing house? Who's been in a packing house since COVID-19 hit? We have a, a major industry in this state and a whole lot of workers that are affected by that. I look at my own family's history, my own experience growing up in Columbus Junction. We make a, a lot of jobs in communities that really need economic support in meatpacking plants. My grandfather spent 20 years as a chief union steward at a packing house in Columbus Junction. However, when one trespasses onto a packing house floor, they can take a video of what are actually very humane practices and make them appear sociopathic and bring dishonor to very honorable work that is done by thousands of Iowans day in and day out. We say we want to do things to support our workforce and develop our workforce. There is a large segment of our workforce that shows up every day and takes a knife to a hawk and does it thousands of times every day. And when we see those images, they don't always look good. It doesn't mean that there was an abusive practice. It doesn't mean the hog felt any pain in the entire process. It doesn't look good. And as Senator Rosenboom has pointed out, there are organizations out there that simply don't want people to eat meat. The goal is to eliminate production agriculture when it comes to animals. The harm that is done by taking a video of something that has been done by the book every single step of the way can be immense. There's a reason for this legislation, and it's not to get at the media, it's not to hide abuses, it's to protect those that are doing everything right and still paying a price. 
That's the spirit of this legislation. You want to talk about abusive practices? You want to talk about worker abuses? There are federal rights that preempt this legislation that protect those workers, that protect against abuses. We have inspections. We have rules and regulations. A packing house can't say, no, no, we don't want the USDA to come in today. A packing house can't say, no, 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 we don't want the Department of Labor to come in today. A packing house can say, can't say, no, 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 we don't want a union here. Those things are all designed to protect our workers, to make sure our food is safe, to make sure things are done in a humane process. What this legislation is about is trying to prevent people from distorting that process. We should be proud of the fact that we feed the world in Iowa. We should be proud of the workers that show up every day to do a very difficult job, that they do it and make our state better because of it. Thank you. Seeing no further discussion, the chair recognizes the senator from Mahaska, Senator Rosenboom, for final remarks on Senate File 2413 as amended. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Bolton, for those comments. Senator Mathis, uh, we've had this discussion, a form of this discussion, a number of times. Um, and of course, this isn't about me. And, and I, I, I realize the awkwardness of the circumstance in a way. I'm a state senator that one might say is reacting to a personal problem. I, I guess I only ask that if you trust that I'm representing an industry, I'm representing my district, I'm representing Iowans, I believe, in this discussion. But my own personal experience is very enlightening. And to your point about penalties that do exist, they feel very inadequate to me. But that's not even the point. The penalties that exist mean nothing to some of these people. They laugh at them. They mean nothing. Trespass? So what? They're more than willing to take that rap. So, but remember, I want to tie this back to the other part of this bill that we talked about is a grave threat to agriculture and that is foreign animal disease. When our building was first intruded or broken into in, I think, April, we think April of 2019, um, we were not taking care of the building ourselves. My family wasn't. It was leased out to someone else. But Veterinarian records indicated that those pigs were indeed sick at that time, if we can believe the dates that we were told. Um, those pigs were sick. They were under veterinary care, they were under treatment. But the intruders who claimed to have all the biosecurity measures covered, because they don't like to be charged with biosecurity breaches, uh, had no real way of knowing what they were walking into. And I'll guarantee you they didn't have any biosecurity measures on the way out because they didn't have a shower to go through, right? They just tracked off the farm with whatever disease they had on their clothes and on their boots and so forth that evening. So they made a mockery of biosecurity matters. What you may not know, probably most of you don't, we were revisited again this year. February 1, early on a Sunday morning. This time they didn't hide their tracks. They came in through the sidewall, they did a couple thousand dollars damage to the building to gain access because the doors were locked. Apparently they didn't find anything they could even twist or distort because they didn't publish any pictures or videos. We know what the building looked like inside the night they intruded. We knew there was nothing there to incriminate anyone. My point is, they laugh at those laws, at the penalties that exist. 
So I simply ask my colleagues to consider the, the intrusion on Iowa families that are simply trying to make an honest living, the threat of intimidation, and, 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 and the, we, we all know something about disease spreading now, right? That was part of the original, the, the other legislation we did is part of this one. They laugh at that. We need to have some teeth, we need to have some, some control over that, or we add greater risk to what we're doing. So, Senators, I would ask that you vote for Senate File 2413, and I ask for a record vote.